a shalom shalom first and foremost i want to give all praises honor and glory to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem rachakwadash double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone peace love salutations and blessings to the house of david which is the elect and uh salakia for my um you know voice if it you know goes in and out <clears throat> dealing with a little bit of a uh a cold so my voice is kind of hoarse um but just uh bear with me through the spirit um but um in this uh lesson lord willing it be edifying to the elect i wanted to uh, touch on um the uh you know the new covenant right um and the uh you know the understanding of why <clears throat> why we aren't you know uh completely in the new covenant you know just yet all right, because, you know, the new covenant, which the word covenant means um, agreement. Right. And with the agreements, just like the uh, old covenant comes uh, certain uh, promises. All right. There, there comes uh, certain um, things that uh, must be established, you know, within the new covenant for it to be, um, you know, complete. And, you know, right now we are because, you know, in the old test, in the old covenant, the the Lord made a um you know he made an agreement with the nation of Israel right by way of uh, Moses that we would have to um you know abide by <coughs> excuse me abide by the law right um or the agreement of that old covenant let me um pull that up um curse he not let's see let's see what comes up mm. Here's, let's see yep uh deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 26 it says curse be he that com confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them and all the people shall say amen which means uh so be it okay so if we did not you know uh um do all of the words of the law, then we would uh, be cursed. Okay. And when you read the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the next verse, the Lord gives us, you know, he basically lays out the, um, the rules, you know, of the, um, the old covenant, right? If you do this, then you'll do this. Then you'll get this. If you don't do this, then, you know, this is what's going to happen. All right. And as we know, um, we did not keep the words of all of the law and do them. Therefore, the promise that the Heavenly Father made about, you know, being cursed uh, fell upon us. And this is why even to this very day, we are in, you know, we are under the curses of the uh, old covenant. Right. And one of those curses was that we would be scattered, you know, throughout the four corners of the earth. And, you know, uh, uh, be in a land um, serving captivity underneath a, a cruel and, um, you know, a wicked nation. Right. And that's, you know, where we at right now. OK, but <coughs> we know that <clears throat> through Yahweh, the Heavenly Father established, you know, um, better promises because the old covenant did have promises of, you know, good things. OK, you know, we will be blessed. You know, we would be above all nations. We would, uh, you know, have uh, uh, the the we would be the borrower. I mean, the lender, not the borrower. We would be, you know, the head and not the tail. So there were things that and we did, you know, through uh, David. Right. And, and Solomon, you know, we did experience those um, blessings. But because it wasn't, you know, because we also did uh, commit iniquity, we did not uh, keep all the words of the law. We had to experience the the other part of that, which was the curses. <clears throat> but neither one of those, right? Need the blessings within the old law. I mean, the old covenant. Um, the blessings didn't entail for us to have um, um, eternal life. You see, and that's why the scripture sp uh, speaks about uh, you know better promises. Okay, a better promises, and that promise was. The promise of eternal life. Now, when we go here to Book of Matthew, chapter twenty-six, verse twenty-seven, um, it says, "And he took the cup, 
and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. See, because when you read in the book of Hebrew, it tells you that, um, you know, without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sins. That's that's a part of the, um, you know, the, the order that the Heavenly Father set up, which is why in the you know Old Testament, underneath the old law, we would have to do what? We would have to bring a, 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 a sacrifice, you know, in order to have our sins forgiven. OK, which, you know, really was a shadow of things to come, you know, a shadow of the Lamb of God, which would be uh, Yahawashai to be that ultimate sacrifice to take away our sins and to pure and to purge our conscience. So when you read in NLT, it says uh, each of you drink from it. I'm going to read it from 27 from the top. It says he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He said unto them and uh, he and gave it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. OK, so Yahawashai's sacrifice <coughs> confirmed, right, the um, the uh, uh, the new covenant, right, the new agreement that the heavenly father made with the nation of Israel, right? The the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, uh, Israel and Judah. Okay? That is what, but it, it starts with the elect, which is why Yahweh Shai said for many, right? He didn't say for all people because A, it wasn't for all nations, and B, it wasn't even for all of Israel at this moment. It was only for the elect, right? The, rem the remnant, the first fruits. Okay? But the, um, the point here is that Yahweh Shai's blood, he con it confirmed the uh, agreement. You know, it confirmed the the new agreement that the Most High would make between Himself and His people, Israel. All right, now when you think of, when you look at it from a standpoint of <coughs> excuse me, of you have this agreement, but now there comes you know, uh, stipulations, right? And there comes um, uh, uh, promises, for, uh, you know, with this agreement, okay? And because those promises are not yet fulfilled, the new covenant is not completed, all right? The new covenant is not, uh, we're not fully living within that new covenant because we have not completed you know, the portion of the part of the promises. See, the old covenant, <coughs> we had the blessings and we had the curses. And now we're living underneath the curses. But as it says in Lamentation, the punishment of, of thine iniquity is accomplished. Right. So we had to go through the blessings and the curses because that was a part of the agreement of that old covenant. Where it comes to this new covenant, which starts with. <coughs> um, uh, it starts with the spirit. OK, so if you want to uh, say, you know, in the spirit, right uh, in the spirit, we are living within the new covenant. Then, yes. Right. Because the new covenant, uh, it deals with faith in the blood of Yahweh. And in order to have faith in the blood of the uh, blood of Yahweh, you have to walk in the spirit. You got to be spiritually minded. All right. Let's get that in the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the book of Romans, chapter eight. Um, let's start at the top. It says there is there, uh, there is therefore no condemnation in them which are in Hamashiach Yahushai, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, the thing about the uh, new covenant it, the Lord, when, when you read it in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, the Lord speaks about how he will put his laws within our inward parts. Right. He will write them in our uh, minds. Right. And write them in, in our hearts. That actually has to that actually can only fully take place once we get those new bodies, because spiritually. Right. Spiritually, 
we do have a mindset, right? Uh, speaking about the hopeful elect, we do have a mindset of wanting to do the, you know, the, the, the uh, will of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, you know, uh, uh, perfectly. But because we are in these bodies, which these bodies really are still tied to the old covenant. Okay. And, and, and the reason why it's still tied to the old covenant is because it's within these bodies. We are feeling the curses, right? We still <coughs> are, we're subject to the, um, you know, the curses in these bodies that we're in right now. Okay. But when Yahweh Shai comes, which is why Yahweh Shai says that his reward is with him. What reward is, is, is he talking about? That reward is tied to the completion of the second, you know, or should I say the um the fulfillment in, in its in its totality of the second covenant, right? Which is tied to the what those new bodies where our uh where the Lord's uh laws will be perfectly put in us to the point where, where we will never uh go off, we will never uh sin. <coughs> okay, and that is why. Um, Yahweh says that, <clears throat> um, let me pull it up in Jeremiah 31, uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 it says, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, right? A new agreement with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. And but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts, as like in their inward parts and write their write it in their hearts. And will be their God and they will be they shall be my people. See that 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 part right there where it says they will uh, um, and I will be their God and they shall be my people in order for the heavenly father to be able to uh, uh, fully dwell within us. We will need those new bodies because in these bodies that we have right now, as Paul says, sin dwells within these and within these bodies. Right. Yeah. The, 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 the law of, of our mind. Right. The spirit is, uh, um, you know, according to the law of the most high. But we're not just <coughs> excuse me. We're not just, you know, uh, uh, spirits. Right. Yes, we are spirits, but we are in a body. OK. And it's these bodies that are subject to the law of sin. Okay, uh, Romans chapter uh, seven. Let's go there. Romans chapter seven, verse um, eighteen. It says, "For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will, for to will is uh, present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not." Right. And NLT it says, "I know that nothing good lies in me." That is in my sinful nature. And that is because we're in these vile bodies, right? We're in these chains of darkness. All right. That's why in the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, it says this. Revelation chapter 21, verse 2. And I, and I John, saw the uh, holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And this is speaking about the elect after they come back down in those uh, glorified bodies, right? In the in the in the in the bodies that are like Yahawashai, you see, because yes, our minds, all right, we have put on the mind of Yahawashai, but we have not put on the body, right? That that <coughs> that where it says, uh, the, you know, metaphorically speaking, about a tube coming uh, coming together as one flesh, we're not. In that state of becoming one flesh with Yahweh Shai yet, because that's what the the uh, allegory here is about a bride adorned for her husband. You see, because we're still in these vile bodies. But once 
we get changed, right? Once we get changed into those new bodies, then this is what will uh, what happened. Verse three. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. See that that's happens once those bodies get changed, once our bodies get changed, once the Lord takes our spirits, which he has uh, purified, right, which he has cleansed through his sacrifice. Right. And, he, and, and his his sacrifice confirmed that new covenant. Right. So that we can have remission of sins. <clears throat> but once he takes our spirits and gives us those new bodies, that is when Yahweh, right, will be able to fully dwell within us. That is why we will be gods on the earth in its full in its full in, in the full meaning of that. OK, verse uh, four, reading uh, more, uh, more on, it says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there should be no more death. See that neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any pain, any more pain for the former things are passed away. <coughs> the former things are passed away. And a part of that former things. And this is why, you know, brothers, elders say that we are in between, you know, the Old Testament, I mean, Old Covenant and the New Covenant, you know, within a grace period, because we are still subject to the former things of the Old Covenant, which is ultimately uh, the penalty of, of breaking the Old Covenant, which is death. OK, that's why in the book of Hebrews, the. Um, or is that eighth chapter? Um, verse 13, it says. And uh, and he and that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the old, the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to uh, vanish away. And NLT says, when God speaks of a new covenant, it means he made the first one obsolete. It is now out of date and will soon disappear. Right. Well, and what ultimately will soon disappear? Not the laws, right? Because the laws are going to be within our inward parts. <coughs> it's going to be the uh, the penalty of the laws, right? Breaking the laws, I should say, which is ultimately death. Now, in the spirit, the Lord has already confirmed that. He already confirmed it with His sacrifice. That yeah, this new covenant is 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 um is the the covenant, right? That is established. But because we are in still in these bodies that are subjected to the old covenant, <coughs> we still uh, um, can, you know, uh, uh, die. Basically, we still can, um, you know, yeah, die, you know, for lack of a better word. But in new covenant, we're going to have immortality. And that is why we're not fully in the new covenant yet, because. Once again, although we live, you know, walk after the spirit, which is let's get that, which is why we have to, um, you know, uh, 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 always be in that mindset, always be in the spirit. Because it is through being in the spirit <coughs> that we fulfill the law of the um, where we want to I want to go. So like it. Romans back to Romans 18. It is through that. Let's pull that up here. Um, Romans chapter eight, verse one, it says there. There, therefore, is no condemnation to them that are in Hamashiach, Yahweh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's right. There's no condemnation, meaning what? Although we're in the flesh and although we, you know, uh, fall short, but because we walk in the spirit, we don't have to uh, um, we don't we're not under the penalty of the uh of the law of the old covenant okay for example brothers you know i speak for myself before coming into the truth and repenting and conf and, and you know uh, um confirming <laughs> that new covenant right i've committed adultery i've done things that according to the old covenant i would have to be put to death uh you know uh, um the penalty would be put to death but it's because of Yahweh and having faith in the blood 
that confirms the new covenant that we are no longer condemned to that because we walk in the spirit now for the law of the spirit Salaki, for the law of the spirit of life in Hamashiach Hawashai hath made me free from the law of sin and death. There you go. So the law of the spirit, which is in Yahawashai, has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, the Most High sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, for and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. <coughs> Verse five is, uh, you know, the point it says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, you see, and that, and that is a uh, key. Okay. That is why, as it says here, which is where I got the title of this lesson from, um, first Corinthians one, verse 23, for I, for I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Yahweh Shai, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. So we just read this in Matthew's 26th chapter, but let's read it here. <clears throat> and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he uh, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this is the new testament of my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it. Remember in remembrance of me. Right. He says this is the cup. This this cup is the new covenant between the Most High and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. OK, so Yahweh sacrifice was the agreement <coughs> was the confirmation of the agreement that the Most High made between Israel and uh, himself, which was something he for uh, spoke of. Right. In Jeremiah, he spoke that he was going to make a new covenant, right? A new a new agreement. Yahweh Shai sacrifice was the confirmation of that new agreement. For th for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. See that? And that is why. <coughs> we when we you know uh uh, uh keep the, the 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 passover of course we still keep the passover according to the old covenant but then also we also keep the lord's passover as well okay and the lord's passover really is the the passover or or the um the confirmation rather of what we're looking forward to of the of the of the promises that we're going to receive within this new agreement. See, and that is why we are in, you know, uh, uh, what we say in between both. All right. But the fact that, as it says, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again, meaning what you are confirming that you are agreeing to the covenant of, uh, to the, you know, yeah, to the, uh, to the um, rules of the, new covenant until Yahweh Shai comes again. Okay. And which is ultimately what living and walking in the spirit, right? That is what we are, uh, are doing. And that's why in the book of Hebrews, the, <coughs> um, the book of Hebrews, the, I want to say, is that the temp chapter? Um, yeah. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29, it says, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant where uh, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace. You see, so it says just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the son of God and have treated the blood of of the covenant of the covenant right the confirmation which made us holy as if it were common or unholy and have insulted and disdained the holy spirit who brings god's mercy to us you see that and you do that by what by by being 
carnally minded, right? By not uh, uh, living up to the standard that Yahweh Shai has, you know, uh, called us to live by so that we can be uh, brought to the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shai when he returns. So every time, you know, uh, and it's not just when you just, um, you know, drink of that cup, but that's, you know, some symbolic, some symbolic, right, of, of, of when every time you take, you drink that, you know, uh, Passover, you are saying that you are, are agreeing to the, to the rules, right, to the uh, uh, regulations and the commandment of the, of the new covenant, which ultimately is tied to faith in Yahweh and through the faith of Yahweh Shai comes a certain way that we would live, which would be in the, uh, living and walking in the spirit. OK, but it's not until Yahweh Shai returns. Right. Until he comes again, that we will have the fulfillment of the new covenant and live completely within the new covenant by way of him giving us those new bodies. <coughs> OK, so, um, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, Lord willing. You know, this was edifying unto the elect. Uh, in closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Shalom.